You are listening to Real Men Feel with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having, but all men can benefit from. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. You know, when, when today's guest first reached out to me, I was hesitant. I was really resistant to, to what he proposed talking about because the first thing I saw in his bio was that he's an expert in persuasion. And I thought, oh, do I really want to have a, a show about manipulating people? That's the first thing that came to my mind. And, but then I talked to him, and he talked me down, and he convinced me this was good. And I also realized that even if, if, it, if it really ended, was a show about manipulation, since there are so many people and companies trying to manipulate you, then maybe knowing about that is a good idea and, and can be of service to you. But uh, regardless of where the conversation goes, I'm glad to welcome professional copywriter and expert in persuasion, Andreas Raro. Welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, Dindy. All right. And did I, was I at all close on your name? Yeah, yeah, it was really close. All right. <laughs> I was even getting a geography lesson before the show started. <laughs> sure. So, yeah, where are you joining us from? Uh, I live in Monterey. Uh, Monterey, it's a, a city that's, uh, I don't know, like one hour, two hours away from Texas. Uh, okay. The people that know Mexico, they, they should know Monterey because it's one of the, the biggest cities. Like uh, the three biggest cities are Monterey, Guadalajara, and Mexico City. But Monterey, I think it's the, the least chosen one to travel because it's, uh, it's not, not touristy at all. It's uh, just like uh, an industrial city. It's very big on, on industry and like Mexicans like to live here because it's a rich city. But it's, uh, in terms of traveling over here, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend go to Playa del Carmen, Cancun mm -hmm. and the fun, the fun stuff. Cool. So it's a nice place to live because it's kind of free of the touristy stuff, but but that also makes it not a great place to, to visit for fun. Yeah, and that can be my opinion, by the way. Like if there's uh, someone from Monterey listening, because I'm, I, I'm not from here, I'm, I'm from Mexico City, they might get a little bit angry. It's like, what are you talking about? My city <laughs> has a lot of things to see, but no, uh, for me, like it's, it's not, not a preferred uh, destination for traveling. Cool. All right. Well, uh, so you are a professional copywriter, and, and just to really make sure everyone's on the same page, literally, <laughs> what is copy? So, yeah, I can, I can understand why you were hesitant about, like, uh, what I do. Um, I'm the type of, like, if you ever are on the, on the web and you start to see those ads, like, oh, are you trying to make money online and, uh, and all these things, like, uh, are you trying to lose weight? And then you click on, on the app uh, and then you get taken to, like, a really, really long uh, website with a lot of text. Um, and it's like, um, sometimes you might feel it's speaking to you, sometimes not. Uh, but the people that feel it's speaking to you, like uh, normally they end up buying. I'm the type of guy that writes those, those type of messages. Uh, not only those type, uh, I, I also create friendlier, uh, um, I don't know, like they call it ad copy uh, that, I don't know, people res respond to. And it's like, oh, I don't feel a scam. Well, like uh, someone was behind that trying to get a message across to you, trying to make you buy. And, and I'm the type, I'm the person doing that. Cool. So it, it's, it's the text that makes up web pages and emails and, and again, those long pages that, I mean, I, I, working in internet marketing, I know those are referred to as sales pages and landing pages. Exactly. Right. Cool. Cool. When I spoke to you before the show, you, you talked about, how, how much human psychology goes into crafting copy. And, and I wondered which of those interests came first for you? Were you looking into psychology and, and fell into copywriting or was it the other way around? Uh, I think it's, it's weird how I got here because I, I can tie the dots and it's a very long journey. Um, I think it started <laughs> with me being a, a kid, being bullied, uh, being kind of like the loser kid, but always thinking, uh, at least in the back of my mind, that there was something I could do to become like popular. And I think a lot of 
us has those type of insecurities. Uh, I, I learned uh, very, like many years later, it's that uh, the cool kids that were bullying me were also very insecure. That's why they bullied me. But that I didn't realize that when, uh, when I was a kid. Um, eventually, uh, one thing that I, because I was bullied and because uh, I'm an heterosexual guy, I, 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 one of the things that I wanted to be popular for is uh, to get girls. And eventually that led me into pickup. Uh, I don't know if you, if you yeah, like uh, if you know anything about those guys, like trying to go out and per, like persuade girls into like sleeping uh, with them and stuff like that. Uh, but the funny thing is that I have found that many times exploring the shadow, like uh, some shadow aspects about people's personalities, like for example, sometimes it's like, oh, I want to make money. And it's like, you have like this very selfish reason to do thing, something and you end up finding, I can I don't know, like kind of the light. Like for example, if you want to pick up girls, you cannot help but work on yourself to become a better person. Uh, sometimes you, if you don't get rid of that insecurity, you actually end up feeding the shadow a lot, but you have to change. Like you cannot stay the same and expect different results. You have to change in some way or another. Um, that led me into like pickup, led me like into, well, uh, I'm going out and talking to these girls, but I don't have any money. Um, I want to learn something about, I don't know, like how to make money. And uh, uh, eventually that led me into internet marketing. I failed at it uh, very badly. And I realized that one of the reasons I failed is because I had no important internet marketing skill. And this is something for life, like for anyone listening, is that if you want to get like good professionally in life, um, you need to develop skills. Like uh, many people are like, chase a business idea. I actually prefer that you chase a skill that you can apply to a business idea. And for example, you can learn how to sell in internet marketing because you don't have the uh, opportunity to talk with people like uh, on the phone or in person what you do is learn to write copy and uh, but it's kind of the same thing it's just that in one you have the one-to-one -one conversation and the, in the other you have like uh, uh, the opportunity to to write things down then when people see the message it's like oh like this person is speaking to me speaking to, to what i desire to he understands my pains and he can convince me to do things and that's kind of like the short version of how how it went Cool. And not so short, but, but the short yeah. is like that. <laughs> so is and kind of is what makes copy successful is is the same techniques that, that work for the, the pickup artist groups? Mm, I, I you know something that I have learned about persuading people and and this kind of applies. Uh, by the way, I never became like a really good pickup artist. Like, uh, I don't know, like, I, <laughs> I'm kind of being a little bit honest here. Uh, but I, I, did, I, I did learn how to sleep with some women, but it's never like, oh man, like this guy, every time he went out, like girls were drooling for, for him or things like that. But I became, I don't know, like good enough for me at least uh, uh, that, that I was happy with my results. And eventually, like, I realized that I could, like, chase something, I don't know, like more, more in line with, I don't know, my values. I realized that hooking up with girls was not going to complete me. And I decided to, to do other things. The funny thing is that at, at one point in my life, I thought that was going to be money. And eventually I realized that money, like happiness lies inside you. <laughs> like, uh, but it took me a while to get here, but I'm very grateful for like the opportunity to, to learn a copy and, and pick up because that's when I started to learn a little bit about psychology and when I started to apply it to me, it helped. And, and well, like, is it similar? In some ways, I think it, it is. Like, in a lot of ways it is. Uh, for example, one thing that's very important if you want to, like, persuade someone to do something is you need to understand that person first. Uh, and you have to be able to step into their shoes and and do things that they're, they're not according to how you think the world should be. It's according to them. Mm. And it's funny because eventually like, uh, like my new, I don't know, kind of thing is that I'm, 
I'm using what I've learned to change me, like to grow better as a person and things like that. And uh, that's something funny, like, because for a lot of years, I was trying to understand other people and how to make other people do things. And it's like, well, uh, why have I never done this with me? And I started to, I don't know what, what I said at the beginning, I didn't know it at the time, but like explore my shadow, explore my insecurities, explore uh, my desires. Uh, explore like a lot of things from me and eventually it's like boom oh man like it's it's been a fun journey <laughs> so, uh, so i really want to has it really been fun you know i now i think it's fun but but it's hard to see it at some points like uh you know like stepping into someone's shadow and uh into someone's insecurities and and pains at first it's a little bit painful, but kind of necessary. And I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain this, but it's like, like a woman when she's like giving birth and she suffers a lot and eventually the kid comes and it's like the happiest moment of her life. I think life in many ways, it's like that. Like you need to, like, you cannot know love if you don't know hate. You cannot know like, uh, sad like happiness if you don't know sadness and, and things like that so and eventually you realize like oh like these bad things are only bad in my mind it's just because i label them and and once you realize it, it's like oh i don't have to feel bad because i i think these bad feelings and everything and then it starts to become fun i know that some years ago when <laughs> like when i was in a lot of pain i wouldn't say it was fun back then but right now it's like oh man like i'm i i don't I don't think I'm light, enlightened or anything like that, but uh, this process, like now I'm starting to realize like, oh, like every time I'm progressing and becoming happier and more fulfilled and more passionate, um, and it's, it's fun. Like, and, and you start to, to actually, I don't know, like I, I play soccer and I love it and soccer wouldn't be fun if I only go to the games and won every time. You need to get like a, uh, players are scoring against you and uh, you need to like have those moments of where, where you're losing for you, for you to enjoy the, the winning. Right. Cool. Yeah. That, that's why I wanted to ask and get clear clarification. Cause, cause I know, yeah, in, in hindsight, things can look a lot smoother, more fun, but when <laughs> I know when I'm in it, it, it can suck too. And yeah, yeah. anytime you're growing or really looking deep at yourself, it, it can be a rough ride. But so it, 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 it I find it really interesting that, in your pursuit of women and pursuit of money and pursuit of, you know, internet riches and all these things, <laughs> it, it sounds like you, you discovered that that's not what made you happy. So you kind of had to go down these, I won't, I won't call them wrong paths, but, but less fulfilling paths to realize, you know, what, what might fulfill you was, was something else. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah. And I think everybody like, no, like I know it's cliche, and and when I when I start to talk with people about spirituality, like sometimes people are like, "Oh man, like not again." <laughs> but uh, and I used to be like that. I, I studied engineering, like just to give you an idea. Like I'm a very logical person, and uh, yeah, like my mind would not have this like what I used to call like bullshit thoughts and bullshit like uh, things. But I don't know, like. Uh, like everything happens for a reason and i know like uh like steve jobs said it like and like eventually the dots connect and i saw it like yeah in my life the dots connect you just have to have faith that the dots will connect in in your life and when you start to put faith into it like when you don't have faith that the dots connect don't worry like the dots are connecting you're just noticing but when if you start to have faith that the dots are connecting things start to happen faster and it's like yeah like it's it's a very cool thing to to see like yeah cool so until you had the experience your first hand experience of some of these things you kind of thought all these uh cliches and platitudes about spirituality were all were all really just bullshit yeah and in a way i kind of always knew at least a little bit that that it couldn't be completely bullshit um uh, because for example, but because for example, I always like thought, uh, contrary to other people that 
there was something I could do to get with, good with women. I knew back then that there was something I could do to get rich and that in a way, and this is a little bit sp spiritual, like not as a spiritual as I don't know, like being in the present moment or things like that. But I always knew that the capacity of, of changing lies inside me and, and any other person. And, and yeah, like that's, in a way that that's kind of my first mini spiritual awakening. But then the process has started to become like very, I don't know, like faster, as I said, like, uh, I, th I think like one or two years ago when, when I started to, to realize a lot of things and, uh, I decided, I don't know, to try things. And it's like, maybe I don't understand this. I don't know. Like, uh, th there was, uh, there's something I do that's called bioenergetics and, uh, I've done like some things. And it's like, oh man, like people would tell me to do these weird breathing exercises. Then I, I did them and it's like, I don't know. I cannot, I can't explain what the fuck just happened. I just know something happened. <laughs> cool. I, I love those experiences. And yeah, that's um, pretty much everything I do today on a daily practice that keeps me happy and healthy and, and vibrant and glad to be alive is something that I used to think was bullshit and made fun of and said, no way will I ever be that person. <laughs> So uh, I, I love discovering that I'm wrong about all those sorts of things. And uh, I'm glad to sound like you feel kind of the same way. Is, is copywriting, is it kind of intentionally taught to use human psychology, understand, like, put yourself in another person's shoes and, and find their pain points? Is that, is that kind of the core of it always? So to get good at copy, like, you need to get... Yeah, the, the most important thing uh, in copywriting is what we call research, if you want to call it like practically, right? And, and research is like, like to just give a, a very brief explanation on to what research is. Like, of course, it has a lot of like steps. Uh, you need to understand the product. You need to understand the market. You need to understand the competitor. But what I like kind of like summarize it to is like research is understanding how the person is going to see the like how the person does see the world and at the same time you're always on the back of my of your mind thinking what does this person need to hear or see or listen because i don't know copywriters do not only write text it will also create uh, video scripts or audio scripts or whatever and like what does this person need to like hear listen see or whatever uh, to to adopt the belief I want them to, to uh, like to yeah to adopt a certain belief that will actually direct them to a sale, and and all of it comes like down to like yeah you need to understand the the other person's point of view, and and many times you are actually understand it even better than what they do, mm. uh, and it's very 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 useful that you actually learn psychology on, on the process. So being an expert in persuasion really means becoming an expert on your target audience and on whatever you're trying to, to sell, to get people to say yes to. It, it's, it's not just, yeah, it, it's not, the only, yeah, it's not just trickery. Like there, there is work behind it. It's, it's because uh, I've seen programs like, you know, get rich quick, becoming a copywriter and <laughs> just make it seem like, oh, just and, and to be honest, to like, like, yeah, that sounds like bad and things like that. But um, I don't know, like, it's not like we have a power, like, uh, like we're hypnotists or like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, like we're like uh, Professor X and we can just go like, do what I say. It's like, it doesn't work like that. And what you need to do is like understand this person and tell them what they want to hear. And the problem is that many times what people want to hear it's yeah, you don't have to work to get rich. <laughs> and, and that's the problem that, that that's the reason why we create those messages is because that's what, what, why people, that the things that people respond to, I have, uh, and this is something that I, that I told you uh, before, like I, I have a, like a, a moral compass that says that I don't sell bullshit. Like, uh, if I don't believe in the product, if I, if I actually think you're scamming someone, I know how to make people buy shit, but I just choose not to, like, it doesn't fulfill me. Uh, 
now that I actually understand psychology, I know that you cannot be happy by hurting other people. And this is actually some psychological thing. Like, uh, you, like if, if you study, for example, Tony Robbins says we have six human needs. Uh, the two, the two, the two, like the the last two, that's contribution and uh, and growth. And yeah, a lot of times we're seeking first for comfort or for status or for love. But once you fulfill those, if you are not contributing to the world, you feel like shit. So I I, I can tell you, like, yeah, you can choose to trick people, and that can make you money. It's not gonna make it's it's gonna make you miserable in the long run if you like you things if you do things that don't contribute to other people growing mm. and I, I wonder was that something you had defined pr- professionally were you at one point take any job that came your way and then realize oh well this one really does not feel good to me no i i always because i was i was never like a like a dark person like uh, trying to hurt people uh for example, when I was trying to sleep with women, it was not like I was trying to sleep with women and, and I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, like do something extremely weird. Like I, I still wanted them to have a, a good time with me, like uh, probably from a bad place. Like what I think that the thing that was dark in me was that um, I was probably more uh, like it was a little bit more about me than about them, but it was never like completely about me. Uh, it was like, yeah, like, for example, I don't know, this is something a lot of guys try to learn is like to get good at sex because yeah, like if I, if the only thing that I wanted was sex, I would just like get hookers, you know, like uh, I actually in a way also want the connection. Uh, but yeah, you also want like the other, I don't know, like things that are like, not important like i don't know like showing off to your friends like oh you see like she's very hot and yeah but but at the same time like i also want that that hot girl to like me Mm. like uh and and little by little you start to realize that the way to do that is like you actually become a cool cool person that people like to hang around and facing your demons like yeah you know the problem is that you're actually not very cool uh and some of it has to do with you're very insecure, so you cannot express yourself. You're trying to impress. Well, if you actually express yourself, uh, people would like you more. And for example, this is kind of similar in marketing. Uh, if the, a brand has no voice, if, if it's tried to appeal to everyone, it doesn't appeal to anyone. So sometimes you have to push people away so the other people can get pulled into you. Uh, but yeah, um, so in that way, I have worked with some clients that I wouldn't work again. Uh, for example, at the beginning, uh, I was transitioning from pickup to 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 marketing and stuff, and I and I did get some clients that were doing pickup, and and their products I actually believed in. Uh, they, they were not like this scammy stuff. Like it's like, hey, like I don't know, from your house, <laughs> uh, just like I don't know, like stay in your house playing video games, and you will eventually get women. It's like, no, you have to go out work on yourself uh uh expose yourself uh, face rejection sorry that that's gonna happen but eventually you're gonna get good and you're gonna get women and and they were good products at the end i stopped working with anything that was related to pickup because i saw it in myself i think it's not like a, a very very good pursuit i think for example uh, a lot of people could be get better uh, in life if they started to first learn to love themselves. And and when that happens, it's it's very like funny how life works. It's like you actually love yourself, and a lot of people are attracted to you, like way more than if you try to learn how to attract other people. Yeah, cool. Uh, you know, you're giving me new uh, insight into the whole uh, pickup world too. Um, because it, it does sound like there is actually some personal growth and development that has to happen for any of that to succeed. And that, you know, hopefully there are more guys like you that, that doing that realize again, that they want, they want to keep growing as opposed to just keep picking up women and having a new one every night, you know, I don't, whatever, whatever the goal might've been, but that how you feel about yourself is more important than what other guys feel about you. That that's kind of feels like the essence. Now. Yeah. Uh, I, I eventually I, I got to live with a guy that was very successful in business and that was very successful in in, in pickup. 
And every time he went out, he would like come back with a girl. And and his view on life, like like for example, he actually showed me the teachings of a, a Pico Paris. He's kind of famous. His name is uh, I, I don't know. He, his name is Alex. Uh, he used to work in a company called RZ, but he doesn't work there anymore. But his major motto is like there is no reason like why you're not enough. And the funny thing is that in my spiritual like a, like kind of journey or whatever that that phrase has came back to me again over and over and over again it's like and it used to be like there's no reason why you're not enough so when you're out talking to a woman and if she says you're stupid there's no reason why you're not enough like you're enough man yeah, just just be yourself express yourself sometimes she just say those things not because she really feels them it's because she she's also like kind of scared that uh, a guy's going to take advantage of her and you just have to be yourself and if she says no like doesn't matter you're you're still someone you're still you're still someone and and it's funny because at the at the beginning it used to be like i want to be not someone i want to be better than someone i want to be like the best or something and what he used to teach and i think it's it's very like i, I don't know kind of advanced in in spirituality when i think back about it it's like you cannot be better than than anyone like you just are and and the problem is when like this is what happens to high school kids like i feel i'm better than others um uh, because i'm popular i'm good at sports or whatever but if someone like tells me i'm not good at that my my self esteem drops like i'm just good when i attach my ego to what i'm good and the moment you realize there's nothing wrong with you even like you suck at something, so what? You're great at something, so what? Like this is where, where it gets tricky because normally it's like, yeah, yeah, I understand it's not wrong to like the, the bad things about me, like they're not wrong. But the problem is that eventually you get good good at some things and it's very hard not to touch your ego to those things. Like mm. someone comes and says, like, you're very smart, and you're like, oh, I'm better than you. I I'm better than them. It's like, no, no, no. Like you just happen to be perceived by someone smart <laughs> yeah I and mean, it goes back you, you brought up skills earlier so at skills you can be better than other and actually in any skill you always will be better than other people and other people will be better than you in that skill but that doesn't mean they're better than you in your innate worthiness yeah exactly yeah cool yeah and that, that uh you know that, that is really interesting how much overlap is here and and actually, the overlap makes sense when you sit back and, you know, spiritual truths are supposed to be universally true. So the fact that they can show up in, you know, maybe distorted ways or in, in places you wouldn't find, expect to find that, yeah, if, if anything is going to cause a human to grow, even if it's initially from, you know, maybe not as a, an enlightened purpose, <laughs> what makes you grow is still the same things that make you grow. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's neat because even in a spiritual basis, you know, someone can think they're very enlightened and very, very into themselves spiritual wise and think they've had lots of spirituality classes and programs and books. And the biggest struggle I'll see with people is still worthiness. I, you know, I'm not worthy of being this good. I'm not worthy of, or people will think, well, now that I'm a spiritual person, I, you know, I should, everything should be free. You know, nothing, there's money shouldn't exist here and all these kind of, <laughs> and they're just other levels of, you have a different level of bullshit that you carry with you in your enlightened conversations now. But yeah, the spiritual ego arises. It's like, and, and, and this, I, I think this happens to everyone. It's like, oh, like I used to react. Now I don't react once, like I started meditating and stuff. And it's like, oh, I'm better now. And you see other people reacting. It's like, I'm better than you because I don't react. And then, and then you go like, oh, damn, I'm reacting to them saying that. And it's like, and it's like oh, is this going to end? I'm, I'm still at the, like where I started and things like that. It's like, you just understand like like things are like things are in the world that they're they're not bad they're not good they, they, they just are like we are the only animal that probably like has these struggles is like and and lives in the past so much uh i i joe dispenza has like a a, a saying I, I like i love a lot it's like if a lion comes for like to eat a, an antelope and the antelope runs away like it's very stressed and stuff 15 minutes later he like he forgot it like he's not gonna be like oh but 
the lion and the stress and uh, I'm not enough like because I couldn't save my I don't know like brother or whatever it's like no man it's like that yeah life just is then right. let's, let's move on even the other way if if an antelope escapes a lion the lion doesn't walk around for days like I'm not even gonna bother chasing <laughs> antelope but I can't catch antelope so I'm just gonna starve you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm they not good enough I'm not as alpha as I used to be yeah or whatever yeah yeah uh, yeah that, that's neat yeah, we're we are we are bizarre beings. <laughs> but uh, I, I, again, I love that all this has has brought you a desire to know yourself more. So, so you mentioned meditating. Um, you mentioned lots of different names and books. Is 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 there one thing? <laughs> talk about comparison. Is there one thing that was better than the others <laughs> in terms of in terms of helping you the most? Actually, I came with, uh, you know. This, I, whenever I, I like say these type of things, I, I say to people like realize like a lot of people are just going to give you tools and you decide which to take. Um, and they're just going to give you per perspectives. If you, if you really open your eyes and listen, you're going to find the perspective that you're looking for. And it might be in this conversation between you and me, and it might be somewhere else. But this is like my, my first advice would be open your eyes because when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And the teacher is not like a, a teacher, like I'm the teacher, Andres Rauri is the teacher. Like, no, no, no. Like uh, the teacher can be like a life lesson. It can be a puppy. It can be a fucking rock or whatever. <laughs> like, but the way I, I started to look at this and coming from my background in copy and things like that is like when I started to do copy and I realized that one of the best ways for people to, to, to change, but like because that's what you're trying to do when you're trying to sell someone something is like, no one wakes up and is like, oh, today I'm going to buy that uh, fat loss book. <laughs> and it's like no one wakes up like thinking like that. You, you need to convince them to, to do that. And the first step, uh, well, first is to get attention, like, uh, but probably like the way you already have the attention of the things you, you want to change or whatever. But the second step in persuasion is like make people feel pain because uh, unfortunately, uh, or things just are, uh, they're not bad, but, um, the, the things way work is that many times we change by pain or by inspiration. But, uh, I used to think it, it was one or the other. Sometimes they go hand in hand, like pain makes you inspired sometimes and inspiration, uh, sometimes makes you feel pain. Normally it's easier for people. Uh, some people are just inspired in some things. Uh, probably a lot of the people listening here uh, have been inspired on many things in their life and they think they don't. It's like, no, 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 I've never been inspired. Why did you play video games for 95 hours like, like continuously? In, in a way, you were kind of inspired on, on like finishing that. Um, but you were not inspired on doing your homework. <laughs> like... Uh, and that seems like it's very hard to sit down and do your homework for three hours, but it's very easy to play video games straight for five hours. And, and one of the ways to change any type of behavior, it's by, by going into the pain. Then it's like accepting a, a present and then it's getting inspired about a future. Those are my three steps. And if, if we want to like, there are many ways to do this, by the way. I, if you actually, if people sit down and say, like, I'm going to ask my intuition, like, to tell me how to feel more pain and how to, and what is pain trying to teach me? Because something I learned is pain is a teacher. It's not bad. Pain, pain many times is a teacher. It's telling you something. It's like, oh, wh why do I feel drowsy? Why do I feel, like, bad and things? Is your body telling you, like, hey, you need to eat better. You need to sleep better. You need to do some changes because if not, I'm going to keep nagging you. I'm, I'm sending you pain until you listen to me. And, and yeah, that's the way things work. Uh, sometimes breakups, they hurt a lot and they are there for you to listen to something and, and, and I don't know, like uh, adjust something. And, but people don't listen and they decide to like suppress it. Because this is what we do. We suppress pain. We, we don't listen to it. Like we, we just suppress it. It's like, oh, I'm just going to wallow in my bed. It's like, no, no, no. Like try to listen to your pain. Uh, a very simple exercise. And there are many ways to do this. Like uh, psychedelic drugs, for example, it's uh, one way to do this. Uh, but a lot of people like drugs, that's too hardcore. It's like, 
You can take a piece of paper out and write down what you're feeling and what it's trying to teach you. And, and concentrate on that. Uh, and you can do this, like, for example, one time a week or, or maybe daily if you feel like it's, if your intuition tells you that's what you should do. Other people sit down and meditate on it. It's like, uh, so, for example, other people, what they do on meditation is suppress uh, as well. It's like, oh, I feel very bad. So I'm going to meditate. I'm going to get to the present moment. And they push the feelings they don't want to feel away. And, and a very good way to let those feelings like come up and let go, it's like focus on the feeling. Focus on the feeling you, that you hate. Uh, for example, something that I have started doing a lot to become more productive is whenever I start to feel like the, the feeling to procrastinate, I sit down a little bit and focus on the feeling of procrastination. Mm. And, and yeah, it, it's teaching me a lot of things. It's like, it's there for something. Uh, it's teaching me a lot of things. And eventually you can let it go. The second step to become like kind of happy because, well, uh, for persuasion and copy and, and all these things, the only things, the only two things you need is like a pain and, and pleasure, pain and, and the inspiring. Uh, but in, in happiness, the, the third step that, that helps a lot is uh, its presence. And uh, like meditation is great for presence and mindfulness and all these things. But uh, for, for people that are like, ah, oh, that's not for me, something as simple as the, finding the things that you are grateful for or the things that you love are very, very easy to, to bring you into presence because you cannot be, I don't know, like living in the past when you're grateful for the things you have right now. Right. And, and something that I advise, but you don't, you don't have to listen to me. You can do gratitude the, 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 whatever way you choose to. But something I, I advise is that choose things from outside, but if you can also choose things about you, uh, like choose your family, choose your, I don't know, dog, uh, but some, sometimes also choose things like about you. Like, yeah, I, I kind of like my eyes. Uh, if you are not feeling grateful about your eyes, don't worry. Like maybe, maybe you should focus on that thing. Hmm. Uh, but, but may, sometimes you can be, oh, I'm very grateful. I have two legs, uh, two arms. I'm very grateful. I have a smile. I'm very grateful. I have a house and I'm very grateful that, um, I decided to take this time to be grateful about me. <laughs> hmm. It's very easy to be grateful about something. And that brings you into presence. The thing that happens is that uh, when, I, when I started to get into meditation and all these things, uh, for example, I, I, one day I was like doing this process, like I'm going to go into my pain. And I seriously, I just put an alarm for uh, a timer, actually like uh, for one hour. And I went to a room and I was like, I'm going to go and feel this pain and do nothing. And that was like, oh man, that's hard because... Because we try to escape the pain, normally we, we go into social media, we go into pornography, drugs. Uh, this, actually, all of those things are just us trying to escape reality. Going to a computer, play video games, watch Netflix. Uh, we, we, like, one of the hardest things for most people to do is like, sit down and be with ourselves. Because we, like the normal person, hate ourselves so much that we don't want to be with us. And so that day I decided, like, enough, I'm going to be with me and see how it feels. And it started feeling horrible, like uh, for, I don't know, like 20 minutes, uh, something. But as I said, it becomes fun, <laughs> as I said at the beginning of the interview. And I don't know, eventually, like, the pain just went away. And eventually, I don't know why I started laughing like crazy um, <laughs> and, and feeling a lot of, like, peace and love. And then I started, like, crying and... And but crying like in happiness, and I was like, "Oh man, this is beautiful! Like, if 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 I die right now, it's okay. Even if I didn't accomplish my goals and anything, like I started like to to have these thoughts, and then eventually start to have no thoughts. And uh, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and the first thought I had after a while was, "Oh, this is like not having thoughts is." And it's like, "Oh, actually, that was a thought." And then, <laughs> and and it's like it's funny like how this worked, but but yeah, it was it was very happy and all that. And then the hour ended and I opened my email and it said like, Hey, I'm not going to pay. <laughs> and, and life happens again. And we have to deal with the practicality of life because this is what we chose to came, come here and do. And one thing that I have found is like, 
after presence, a very useful thing to have is a very, very exciting vision about the future. And with these three steps, like it's amazing what, what you can do. Like you can change anything and you can feel amazing right now, but at the same time, not like not trying to escape things because this actually, I have met a lot of successful people and some successful people are very, very, very unhappy. And, and you don't want to be like, I, I, I assume uh, most people don't want to be like that. Like, I, I don't want to get like a millionaire and feel like shit. Some people say like, oh, but I prefer to be a millionaire and feel like shit than being poor and feel like shit. But it's like, yeah, but you can choose to be a millionaire and feel amazing. Like, why not? And the way to do that is by, by the, Dalai, Dalai, the Dalai Lama says happiness is a, is a discipline. So practice happiness, but also practice like a, that vision for the future. And, and, and that's when it becomes a game and it's fun. It's like every day is like you wake up and it's like, oh, you, I love my life right now. I'm going to just like a kid that's trying to play and, and do the best he can to win that game. But if he doesn't win, he still is like, like I, I have seen like, uh, I have like a nephew before we start to fuck him up and <laughs> put some insecurities into him. Like you start like chasing after him and he's like laughing all the time. And, and he tries his best to run away. But if you, like, you, you eventually catch him, he's not like, ah! And that happens to another nephew that's actually a little bit older. Uh-huh. Like, he, he already tries to win and to impress and things like that, right? But that, that, the, that other nephew, like, when you catch him, he's like laughing at Like, ah, I lost. So, so what? I did my best. And like, yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah, you touched on a lot of great things there. And uh, yeah, I wanted to, I first... Well, I've heard about meditation forever and it was always something I thought, oh, I can't do that. And oh, it's too hard. And, mm-hmm. you know, but that's, that's when I thought meditation meant having, having no thought, like you said, just being empty headed. But the, the best explanation for what meditation is that I was ever given was that meditation is having a thought, noticing it, and then choosing to come back to emptiness. So the meditation is the practice of coming back, not just you know, I sit down and I have no thoughts for an hour. No, meditation is, oh, what am I, when am I doing the laundry? Oh, oh, wait, I'm meditating. Oh, what, you know, it's, 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 the, it's noticing and coming back. It's more of an awareness thing. But when, when I really got into meditation, I think it was like 2007, I used CDs from Centerpoint. You just listen to them. It's called Holosync and it made your brain meditate. I was like, this is great. But I would, I would using it to escape. I would meditate up to six hours a day just because that felt great and my regular life didn't feel great. So I'll just do this thing that feels great. So I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because that, you know, that, that's a real thing as, especially as we, where we start our progression, we start personal growth and we find something that makes us feel so good. And then that just becomes the new addiction. Right? So it, yeah, yeah, we might be doing a little bit better, but all we did was replace one problem with another problem, but it seems like, you know, a spiritual problem. So it's better, but, and also your willingness to sit, because um, I, I tell people to do that all the time. And in, in my experience, when we're willing to feel the emotion, the moment it shows up, it passes quickly. And, and on the other side of every negative emotion is, is peace, is, is bliss again, right? It's that, that dark net of the soul um, doesn't have to be all night long. <laughs> if you're willing to be with it, you can you know, feel horrible and pain and everything that you think is wrong with you, and you're willing to feel it. And it, you know, emotions are energy in motion. They, they want to move. Our, our, our emotions and feelings don't want to stay with us and bug us for, for days, weeks, months, years. They want to be felt and released. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very nice way to put it. Like, yeah, emotions, emotions they just want to be felt. And if you suppress them, they're going to find a way that you feel them. And I think the best example is driving. <laughs> Like you feel your like there's some anger inside of you. You don't feel it. Well, when you're driving and someone like like crosses inside in front of you, like oh, like that emotion was already there. Like uh, it's not because he crossed in front of you. It's right. because you were already angry. But they just needed an outlet. And yep. if you feel the outlet more often, you don't need you don't have a, a need to explode in those emotions. And not, like now that you brought it up, like uh, like emotions are like need to be felt. I, I have like a kind of dark story. Uh, I used to have a roommate that killed his girlfriend and then like suicide. Mm. And, 
And the funny thing is that for many like years, I was like that motherfucker. And eventually I realized that he was just a normal person. And that's like, for many people that's scary, but he like, seriously, he, if you knew him, like, yeah, he had some issues, uh, but I think we all have, uh, I never saw him like hit his girlfriend or anything like in the, in the years, like I lived, well, like half a year I lived with him. I never saw him like explode or kill someone or, or like, uh, and, and do something to his girlfriend. Like he, he used to be like one of these guys that went to like bars and got into fights, but he, like with his girlfriend, never, like never, 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 never. Uh, but, but now that I look back, like he, he used to run about like from his emotions about like pain and, and anger and I think that the moment I stopped living, and this is my, maybe a theory, he, I, me and him used to like started to have a lot of problems living together. And that's why I stopped living with him. And I think that the moment I went away in, like he found a new outlet and that was his girlfriend. And, and eventually he did it. And, and if, he, if now that I remember him, I say like, he was not a bad person. He was just a person that was not, in control of his emotions and and the funny thing is that like uh like he like he killed her but if he was a monster like he he wouldn't have been able to live with himself like no one's a monster actually but but that's something i i say like yeah like he felt a lot of pain because of what he did and that's why like he then took his life and because he, he couldn't live with what he just did and that's another way of like escaping. And, and the funny thing is like, I, I kind of feel that, and that everything happens for a reason. And I think he came here us to give us a lesson. And, and now I can see some lessons, maybe not all, all the ones that I should, uh, but, but I can see some lessons of, of his life and, and, and the things he did. And, and, at the beginning, when that happened, I, I used to be like, oh, that crazy guy, that crazy guy, that crazy guy. And there was a, a voice on the back of my mind saying things like, in a way, you're like him. <laughs> and, and when I started to realize that, it's like, yeah, like uh, in many ways, I also escape my emotions and sometimes burst out into people, maybe have never taken that that far. But if I don't control it, it can get that far. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, call, calling someone, you know, they're crazy, that's just another way to make separation and say that couldn't be us but yeah the we're all again we're all human we're all more like than different and we all have the ability to murder and rape and steal and just all sorts of hor horrible things um but yeah ideally when, when we when he, we when we want our happiness and and growth when that when when what we think of ourselves is what matters most we we, we don't give in to those kind of impulses and, and dark thoughts yeah yeah yeah, one of the, when I, I started to like study psychology because of, of copy, but then th that's something I, I really started to enjoy, like the study psychology for copy, but you also see how to use it for yourself. And when you study like what happened in World, World War II and uh, the Nazis and all these like people, you see like there were a lot of normal people that participated in, in that. And, and Jordan Peterson once said, like, hey, if there's a lesson to be learned about World War II, it's not like we should fight the evil or, or, or anything. It's like the, the lesson is you are the Nazi. And, and what he means is like, if you were living in Germany back then, you probably would have been one of those people. Like, for example, there, there were a series of policemen that, I don't know, like there, there were the little kids that got into the system and they brainwashed them. So they became mean and killed people and stuff like that. But there were also some 30, 40 years old over there that just stood there and said like, well, I'm gonna, I, I do not agree a hundred percent, but, but everybody's doing it. It's my job. Um, I'm going to do it. And there were all people like they were civilians that decided to look away and didn't help. Uh, they were other people that participated and, and did, did a lot of things that, that if you go to Germany, they're not at all proud about that. But the funny thing is like, oh, those Germans, cold-hearted people. And it's like, I have a, a joke that says like, oh, if you stab a, a, a German like, and twist the knife, he's going to be like, oh. But that, that's just a joke. To be honest, they're just humans. And, and probably like in a, 
in a, in another situation we would have, we would have done just the same like just 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 the same yeah. and that's for some people that's a scary thought but you can actually learn from it and say like how do i program me so so i choose yeah i mean you talked about you know basic psychological needs and safety and security are some of the most basic and you know i'm sure there were times in everyone's life where they were you went along with the crowd because it yeah. felt safe and you knew it was wrong, but like, well, it, every, yeah, everyone's doing it. That mob mentality. You don't want to stand out. You just want to fit in with everybody around you. Even when it was doing something that you knew was wrong, it, that it was going to end up badly, that it was harming someone. Um, and sir, sir, it's Nazism is the, you know, the, a huge example of that to a, to a real extreme, but but yeah, I, I think everyone can can see that in their life um, if they take the time to look. Yeah, like when I look back about uh, the days that I got bullied and all that, it's like the funny thing is that the the only thing that I wanted was to be like the guys that were doing th that to me, you know. And the funny thing is that if sometimes I got the opportunity to like kind of be mean and uh, and feel better than others. And, and th that's the reason why we like kids do that. It's like I, and and we do it as adults as well. Like I feel I make other people feel bad because that's a very easy way to feel superior to someone in that moment, and that gives me a little boost of of self esteem. But if you went inside and said like there is no reason why I'm not enough and and all these things, you realize you don't have to do any of that. And the, and the funny thing is like why do kids do that? Are they mean? It's like they just are. And they feel the same insecurities than, than all that. And, and, and you can see it in kids. Like kids can get so mean like to, to each other. And I've been in both sides. Like I, I have been bullied and I was a bully. Um, and you can realize you can rise above that. Like, uh, but yeah, you need to have the lesson that, I, that, that you can rise above that. Like uh, some people feel bad about their past. And, and, and I used to be that guy. And sometimes I still are. Uh, that person that like, yeah, uh, my past, like, oh, the things I did, why didn't I do this and, and stuff? Like, why I was not raised by the Buddha that was also Bill Gates that teach me how to, like, be rich? And, you know, it's like, no, man, you have exactly the life that you're supposed to have to learn the lessons. So listen to pain. It's trying to teach you something. And, and from there you can grow. I'm not going to try to have you represent all of Mexican male culture, but, but, <laughs> but, but how common among, among your friends, among the, the people you grew up with is this investigation of your own worth is in bettering yourself. Is, is this common? No, <laughs> but I don't think anywhere in the world it's very common, but some, something that, you can be very proud about the world today is that every time it's more and more common. Like, uh, for example, my, my father is a successful businessman. And, uh, and he, when, he, when, when I was younger, he talked, me, he talked to me about meditation and all these things. But I was like, oh, this is some weird stuff, that. And, um, and I just, like, I don't know, like never listened to him. Like, I, I remember like he, he had like a trick or like she would sit and start like meditating and one hand would get very like cold and the other would be warm. Huh. And I was like, oh man, that's, that's some, like I realized like, yeah, there's some mind control, like body mind control that you can do, but, but why the fuck would I want to do that? Like, yeah. I just want to get girls or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, but for example, my dad didn't scratch this, like he just scratched, like, I don't know, found some practices, but he didn't go as deep as, as I went. And when you look at the world today and, and now you have like, yeah, you have some weird apps and access to pornography has never been better. Uh, like that's a shadow aspect about society. You also have mindfulness apps you, and you also have like a lot of things are, are changing in the world where, where they say, and, and I actually believe this, that the world is awakening. Um, it used to be that the only enlightened people would be Jesus Christ and Buddha and, and they would happen every year. Like, a lot of years mm. and and for example in the eastern cultures uh yeah they would be there but here on, on western society like nothing of, of that at all like uh and and now it's changing like a lot of us are awakening and and realizing a lot of things and 
yeah, it's not normal here in Mexico. I'm, I'm not like a, I don't know, I'm maybe one of a hundred or maybe one of a thousand, I think, but still one of a thousands of, of some millions. It's uh, a lot of people now uh, when it used to be one every million or one every billion. And every time we're more and more like among my friends, uh, for example, I, I do have some that, that do some type of spiritual practice. Uh, I have many others that, for example, I talk to them about them, uh, about it. And they, I can see that they're willing to change a little bit, maybe not as much as, as my ego would want them to like, and the funny thing about the ego is that one part of my ego probably wants that they, I, I take them, like they take me as the leader and it's like, Oh, like you're the best. Uh, you changed my life. And it's like, like, no, like that's a need from the ego. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's something funny because this is something that happens when, when a lot of people start to get into personal development or, or, or spirituality, they, they have a need to get approval from other people and, and they show it by people should follow me. And, and this is like, they call it the hero. Like I want to be a hero for a person, like for other people. And one way to be unhappy, like it's by being a tyrant, like Hitler, like no one wants to be like Hitler also suicide himself because I'm pretty sure he was not happy with the things he was doing. Uh, every time he killed someone, uh, he probably felt his ego like, uh, like, yeah, I did it. I'm better. But at the same time, deep down, like he did was like, if you went into his body, I'm pretty sure he was feeling a lot of pain. And, and yeah, you're, it's, it's very, it's impossible to be happy as a tyrant, but it's also impossible to be happy as a hero. Uh, like if you are like, I need other people to see me as, as the person that, that's going to come and save them. And that's not the way, like the way it's more like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing this. If you want to follow, follow. If you're not, it's okay. Um, and sometimes we do these things, for example, um, I, I've seen it in my family, for example, where like someone has money and, and someone else doesn't and the, and the one with money helps the other person and, and, and they are like, can't they see that I'm helping them? And it's like, are, are you noticing like the, the, the reason why you're doing it is because you want the approval. You want to feel, I, in a way you also want to feel better than them. It's like, Hey, I help you. I'm better than you. Mm. And, and that's not the way, like just. Just do, just do you, and and things are gonna happen. Cool. You know, earlier you mentioned to have a uh, an inspiring vision for the future. So, I wonder what you are looking forward to. Um, well, I have like a a very like, not so vast, but kind of it's it's like I have pages like uh, that I write down and. Uh, for example, I have a vision for my health, a vision for my spirituality. I, I didn't used to have a vision for my spirituality, but uh, the first person that taught me about vision and things like that was Tony Robbins. And I remember like he said, like, have a vision for your spirituality. And I was like, this weird thing. Like, oh, I'm just going to go past this, uh, this thing. I'm going to go through the other things. Like, what's the vision for my money? And it's like, but yeah, I have uh, visions for... For, for all of that, for example, in my business, uh, I'm trying to get to a million dollars. Uh, at the same time, I'm, I also have a vision about the, uh, the, the amount of people I want to help with uh, the, the products I sell and things like that. Uh, I also want to start getting employees. And so, because in a way I like, I don't know, like training people and uh, making them better and having conversations and yeah, as a copywriter, uh, I've been <laughs> like kind of a long wall for a while. Uh, like just me in my, I don't know, desk writing stuff that converts and makes money and it has been fun, but now I'm, I'm ready to go to the next phase. That's like bringing some people in and, uh, and yeah, like helping them achieve their, their goals as well. Um, but build something together. That's something for business. Uh, I also have a vision for, I don't know, like, uh, well, I have a girlfriend that I plan to marry. Um, I, I, we have, I have a vision for that. I, yeah, I also, I don't know, like uh, uh, there are a lot. <laughs> great, great. Hmm. Well, Andreas, I want to thank you for helping me get through my resistance 
to to having a talk about persuasion because I I have found this really to be fascinating and and find you to be a, a fascinating man. So, <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. So keep it up, keep digging, keep having fun <laughs> in your digging and the exploration of the shadow and and all that good stuff, which isn't always good, but uh, is in the long run. <laughs> What what what's what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Find out what you're up to. Uh, well, first, uh, let me thank you, Andy, because this platform is amazing. It's it's really cool that that you're doing this. Uh, and yeah, answering your question. Uh, well, the the best way is like just reach out on social media. Uh, I, Andy's going to share the links uh, because it's hard to spell my name, but well, if you want to try it out, uh, you can find me on Facebook and even add me. Um, there's no problem. It's not like I'm uh, extremely famous or anything. Uh, so yeah, like you can add me on Facebook. Uh, it's Andres Raro. Um, yeah, you can add me on LinkedIn or, or Instagram. Uh, follow, send me a message on all, one of those platforms. I'm, I'm not super busy because I'm not Elon Musk, uh, but, but I'm also not uh not not busy at all so if you send me a message or anything i might take one two three days to respond sometimes uh sometimes i respond the same day but yeah eventually i do get back to it everywhere cool and uh yeah andreas you're you're correct if anyone uh wherever you're listening to this and you want to capture some information and follow up visit realmenfield.org and on the blog post for this show we'll have uh links to all of andreas's social media contacts so you can reach out connect with him um but again, I want to thank you. Um, I want to see what you create next and where you're going. Um, I, again, I think uh, this topic is much more interesting than I had given it credit. Um, <laughs> so uh, thank you for opening my eyes and helping me get present in that process. And thanks for sharing all, all your tips, your experience, your, uh, your enjoyable troubles, <laughs> your, your, your happy digging, you know what it is. But uh, so... Thanks everyone for listening and be willing to explore yourself, be willing to realize your worth and it isn't tied up into comparison or what anyone else thinks except what you think. So as always, until next time, be good to yourself. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Contact us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Please subscribe to this podcast and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel. <laughs>